Hello everyone, it's Tana and welcome back to the Rabbit Hole Designs YouTube channel. Today I have a view of the new release, or the latest release. I know it's not brand new to you guys. And the first video from, of mine for the month, with another video coming shortly thereafter. I have the names of the stamps that's up above for you guys. And I will read some of the stamp uh, sen sentiments as we're going along here in the video. I think these are so adorable and I cannot wait to play with them. It reminds me of summer and warm weather and I really loved using the stencil. I love that it has three different, four different types of ocean waves on the edges. And then you have some sea life to work with there and some bubbles. And then we have the which I was very excited about, Lovely Lilies. And this was drawn uh, by Kelly Taylor, or, and many of you know her as Kelly Ladavola. And it was her verse, very first uh, produced stamp set carried only by the Rebel Designs. So I'm so excited. I was so excited that that is what we're using today. And I made quite a few cards. So I wanted to do different techniques for each card. Um, I didn't end up doing that many different techniques. Uh, and you won't see me go through the process of every technique, but I will show you what the cards ended up looking like. So for this first one, I used my, is it Lost Shadow or Lost in Shadow? Lost Shadow, I believe, Distress Ink for No Line. And wait till you see how significantly that lightened up after I stamped it. Which, I mean, is what I was going for, but I was shocked at how light it did end up being when it dried. So I stamped those out the way I wanted them. I used some of the smaller images in the stamp set and went up along the, or, you know, from one bottom corner up the side of the card, the left side. Then I used the bunch of lilies on the next couple cards. So I used uh, this one on Bristol Smooth and heat embossed it and then I also did this one where I made up my own design with the full lily and the leaves and did that on the top and the bottom and there were also two I don't know why I didn't show them at the beginning of the video unless I missed it there are also two done on black watercolor cardstock and heat embossed with gold embossing powder so you will see those as well so let's get started here. This is the one where I showed you the most of my process. I'm just using normal watercolor colors on uh, Arches 140 pound um, watercolor paper or watercolor cardstock, whatever you want to call it. And I was just not too much shading going on. I did try it a little bit, but I was putting water in the wells in between, you know, because I heat embossed the image and then spread my color throughout, at least for the first layer. And then I tried to go in just to do a little bit of shading, but it's, you guys know me, I need to practice my watercoloring. Sometimes it turns out fantastic. Sometimes it turns out like a hot mess that I'm able to fix a little bit. This one was kind of a half and half and then <laughs> I'll show you when we get to it, but then there was a, a little incident, so we end up cu fussy cutting this one out. I'm still going to use it as I intended with the, the piece on the top and the piece on the bottom, but it had to be cut out and adhered to another panel. So let's get to some of those sentiments. Let me grab them real quick. What do we have here? I have here Otter Play, which says Bon Voyage, Vacation Mode, Just an Otter Day in Paradise, Have an Otterly Amazing Day, and then we have the Lovely Lilies, which has With Sympathy, and then Distance means so little when someone means so much, which I really, really like that sentiment. I think it's beautiful. I'm going to hold on here. Uh, 
Um, I did not have the colors moving back to the video that I wanted or had pictured in my mind for the lilies. So I ended up pulling out some Catherine Pooler inks to paint those. I just dropped a couple drops on my glass uh, work surface and added a little bit of water to it. Yeah, more, wa more water for a lighter color, less water for a darker color. We now have Otterly Adore, the stamp set. And this one has, there's no otter like you. I utterly adore you and made for each other. And I love this set because it's got a little heart that you can stamp out, a little seashell, and even a little paper boat, which I thought was totally cute. You could put that on the little child's head, the otter baby, or in their hand. Same thing with the seashell. Now, I was looking at an image of a lily when I painted these and I was trying to go for like a pink going into a very very light purple with white a lot of white there was a lot of white coming out from the center and white coming out from the edges of each petal and it just was not going the way I wanted it to so after I painted the lilies I ended up going in with my white Prismacolor pencil. See how quickly this this one turned dark? And it just kind of looks like there was no variation at all. I went from having variation to my paintbrush just, it's like it all of a sudden became a larger brush in my hand. And a lot of the darker pink, pinkish purple turned into splotchiness. So here I tried to go in with some white watercolor paint first. And I mean, you can see it, but as it dries, it picks up more of the pink tone, the pink undertone, and just doesn't really look white anymore. And that's when I end up drying it with my heat tool and going back in with a white colored pencil. Um, as for the last stamp set, seeing is believing there's only one sentiment and that says seeing is believing so quite a few sentiments to choose from from those otter sets though um, and here is my first step in the no line coloring and then my second step in no line coloring so i went in and put the lightest color down first across the entire panel and then i went in and put it in my darkest color and now we'll move back to this so that one i did off camera and these I did on camera. Now I'm using my metallic watercolor paints. One of them is a set off of Amazon. One of them is a, I believe it's a Paul Rubens set. If I can find it, I'll link it below. And a lot of them are dot cards and a couple of half pans um, from Yuli on Etsy. I really love her paints. I want to get some more so badly. And of course, there's going to be no... I can't figure out a way how you would shade something like this with this glitter and metallic paints. So what I did was take the center flower, paint it purple going halfway up the petals, and then painted it blue coming down from the top of the petals to meet halfway with the purple. And then I just tried to blend it that way. And then with the two outer lilies on either side, I took the blue and brought that in from, out from the center of the lily on the petal and then took the purple and brought that in from the outer edge of the petals in towards the center so that they would have a little bit of variation even though they're you know kind of look the same and then I just used different shades of green for the foliage and the leaves and I really honestly for simply as this one was painted, I think it turned out stunning. And I, both of both of the ones on the black watercolor cardstock, I think turned out stunning. Now, one of these, I did it as kind of a test for myself, but I didn't end up using a lot of water, so you know, kind of was the wrong time to to do a test. One of them is on Van Gogh black cardstock or watercolor cardstock, and one of them is on Stonehenge black watercolor cardstock. 
So we'll have to do a better test for that some other time. And now we're taking the one that was heat embossed on Bristol. And rather than, I don't know why I wanted to do it this way, but rather than blend them into each other naturally, I wanted to do it where they had straight lines of color all the way across the flower. So I pulled out some colors there and I listed them for you. You'll notice there's no orange because I wanted the red and yellow to make the orange. And there was no green because I wanted my yellow and blue to make green. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to start inking those up and blending them together until I get the colors that I wanted. So I'll go in and I'll put the yellow down and then I'll go back and put more yellow in the section where the orange is going to be and then I'll bring the red in to that orange section until it makes the orange tone that I want. I don't know if you noticed but I had to bring in, originally I chose squeezed lemonade. It is my favorite shade of yellow in the distress line but it was drying out and I was having such a hard time with it so I had to go back and trade it for mustard seed which still is another brilliant beautiful yellow but not my favorite it's my second favorite but moving along so then we have purple and I did want to add more than just purple so I did make sure that I had enough room when I planned out how big each line down the card would be because I wanted them to be even and I made sure that there was enough room for pink as well so there you have it it took a little bit of time to ink blend but not too much especially with doing it with perfectly straight lines and not trying to make a perfect smooth blend between each color so that, that made things a little bit easier in fact when I trimmed this down before I ended up fussy cutting it I uh, kept all four edges of it because they just look so cool trimmed down with just those chunks of color going all the way down I'm sure I'll find something to do with those there's that orange tone I was looking for. Has anybody else had the entire Distress Oxide and regular Distress line of inks but didn't bother to buy the reinkers? I have so few reinkers and I'm so mad at myself. I should have bought the reinkers when I bought the ink pads like I did with the Catherine Puller inks. Because now all my stuff is starting to dry out and I'm getting very frustrated. Oh, there's, a lot. there's the uh, list of colors for you guys. I guess I put it up at the end. Now here is one of the final stages of my no-line coloring. I went in with my darkest color again and then with some... If it's not on this one, it's on the next time I show it to you. Some white highlights. And now I'm showing you all the finished product of my hard-earned watercoloring and pencil coloring. So, the only thing I did not do was marker color, you guys. Maybe I'll have time to do an extra video where I marker, use my um, alcohol markers to color. So I don't know why that says, oh, that's why. <laughs> so I use my Catherine Puller hoodie, which is a new color, on a piece of slightly smaller than A2 size car craft card stock. I believe that's Nina um, Desert Storm. Is that what it's called? And I'm placing those two loose leaves in a random pattern all over the panel. And then I wasn't sure if I should color them or not. Originally I was going to leave them uncolored. Now right here I'm making a frame. A very slim black frame just to put some separation between the popped up center panel and the background panel and if you don't understand what I'm saying you'll see it in a minute so I did decide to color them green you guys let me know in the comments below would you have left them uncolored or would you have colored them I'd like to know inquiring minds want to know so then I popped up that center panel with a uh, one layer of foam tape added some Nouveau Deluxe adhesive so I could have a little wiggle room when I centered that and I also used the You've Been Framed dies to cut that center panel out. Now I'm taking that very thin frame I made 
and cut out of a uh, black cardstock and I'm going to use my Barely Arts glue and place that around the outside of this popped up panel flat to the background panel and try my hardest to make sure it's even and I really like that look I like the way it turned out I think I might use that more often I'm going to take my uh, Pear Blossom Press uh, Perfect Sentiment uh, per Black Sentiment cardstock I don't know what it's called you guys it was just on the screen and that's how, how soon I forget anyway it's meant for sentiments it's got a white core but you can easily color in the edges with a black marker when you cut it up which I like and it and heat embosses like a dream so I used all you need is and then love from the love uh, word stamp set and um, die that came back came out what last year year before I just didn't seem like any of the sentiments that I had to choose from from the new sets fit what I was looking for so I used the word love and I stacked it up three times and then I use that little phrase all you need is and heat emboss that with wow super fine bright white embossing powder and now I have inked this panel with some clouds from the clouds of my coffee stencil and I put in the center that beautiful sentiment off on the lovely lilies stamp set that says distance means so much so little when someone means so much and then I use those two lily panels I created for the top and bottom of a card and glued those on, well I put them on phone tape and then glued them to the top and bottom of the panel. I'm so sorry I'm stuttering and sputtering lately. It seems like I'm just I'm having such a hard time getting back in the swing of things after all the issues this winter. So hopefully that'll change soon. And then we're just going to put that on top of a white card base. And I added some little gray half pearls that were in my uh, package from the rabbit hole designs. And now we're going to move on to this next card here. Now I'm taking, I used my uh, arch die set and cut out this panel with an arched die. And now I'm going to heat emboss from the hello, uh, I forget what they're called, but they'll be in the description box. I wish I could remember the proper names of things. I used the Hello stamp and a sentiment to go with it, Hello Gorgeous. And those both come on the same little word stamp set. I did not use the dies this time. And now we're going to use our Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive to glue that panel over a piece of gold mirrored cardstock. I think it's satin effect cardstock. And I will put the color of that down below as well. And then we're going to glue the whole thing to a black card base. And I did cut the center panel out of that because there's no need to waste that much gold card stock when you don't need to. Now we're going to take a piece of vellum and I kind of just tore at the edges till it looked like smooth enough and had enough space to go around the whole entire lily image that I watercolored with some metallic and yuli. Uh, watercolors and then I took this piece of shiny black cardstock that I hot foiled with the garden trellis hot foil die took my old very old-fashioned deckle edge trimmer that was handed down from my grandmother and eyeballed the cuts to go all the way around each of the four sides and trim them right on a white card base with that one then I used the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive to put on the back of the vellum only where the foam tape was. So we can glue that without the adhesive being seen from the front. Moving on to the next card, we have that ink blended uh, image on Bristol. And I hot foiled another panel with some satin effect, or satin foil, I believe it's like peach. Uh, I will double check and put it down below and I rounded the edges with a rectangle die for both that panel and the peachy panel I put behind it 
And I also colored the panel with the Amanda leaves that I hat foiled. And that's the Amanda leaves hat foil die that I hat foiled it with. And I colored each section to line up with the sections on the f lilies themselves. So, I mean, you have to let me know if you like this look. It was something I've never done before and never seen before. And still not quite sure about it. Anyways, I added some rhinestone gems and some glitter drops to these three cards. And that's it for this video. Four cards today, guys. Four cards. A little bit longer video, but that's okay. Don't forget to sign up for the Rabbit Hole Designs email so you can be aware of new releases. Don't forget to look at, the, take a look at the Facebook uh, fan page. Always some good stuff going on in there. And don't forget to look on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram for all the inspiration the design team gives throughout the month. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.